Hello everyone. I thought I would show you another project that can be done by pretty much all ages and even enjoyed by adults. And it's called Spinner Art. And it's a project that I use in first grade, the very first day of school. And I do it so that I can teach curvy lines and points and spiral lines. And you can create some of those nice shapes with this project and have a lot of fun doing it. And I just also want to teach that, hey, art's going to be fun this year. I also like this project because, again, the materials are pretty simple and hopefully things that you have at home. So you will need paper. And today I am going to use just the computer paper because I think that you probably have it at home. Uh, you need some old CDs. So I have my TurboTax 2018 here. You need some sort of masking, painter's tape, duct tape would work, but if you use duct tape, you would probably want some scissors. And um, then you need markers and test your markers so that you make sure they're not dead and you're not gonna get like those lot of white in your marker when your marker spins, cause they'll be spinning pretty fast and you'll get some white in there if you've got some dead markers. And then also you'll need some sort of a table cover because you will run off the page and we want it to run off the page. So I'm going to just start by showing you how this works to see if you're even interested in doing something like this. And um, I'm going to demonstrate two different ways that you can make the spinners spin. So this is what a completed spinner looks like. And to make the spinner spin, the first way that you can do it is to just take it in between your hands and send one hand one direction and the other hand the opposite direction. So for me, my left hand is moving forward, my right hand is moving backwards. And um, it will take your cap off, look something like this. So you take it and pull. And you can just wait it out and see what happens. And I'll pull it up a little bit closer. I got some really tiny curvy spirals and then kind of a star shape at the end and a point. You can, you wanna get these sort of balanced, otherwise they kind of clunk along, but you can get them so balanced that you end up with just a little, um, saturated dot in the middle. So you, we kind of want them balanced. This one's pretty balanced, but not so balanced that the only thing we get is a, a dot. So the other way that you can do this, and some for some kids this way is easier, for other uh, children the second way is easier, and that is simply to twist it. You can twist it, like move your thumb, almost like you're clicking your fingers or kind of turn your wrist is another way so you can do it. Just turn it. So I'm just going to turn it, and I kind of did my thumb at the same time. So for some kids, one way is easier. For other kids, the other way is simpler for them. And again, that's almost too balanced so that it is just kind of staying in one place. And so then I get some of these things that move across the page and that's okay too. Um, Kids have a lot of fun with this, and I, some of my favorite pictures that I've taken of the kids, oh, this is gonna be a really nice spiral right here. Um, they have their heads down and they're staring at them, but take a look at that spiral that we just created there, that red spiral. But the, these might look like when you get these lines going across the page, um, you get some fun shaped curvy lines. You might say, oh, but when you get it all together and you have all these interesting shapes and lines, it really looks nice. Uh, so in order to make this, what you do is I use this as my guideline, this stripe across the marker as my guideline. And I usually try and line it up with the bottom. Well, I guess if you're looking this way, the bottom one, if you're looking this way, it's the top one. But the one closest to the marker edge is the one I try and line it up with. And the reason I try and line it up is so that my marker is not crooked. But if I kind of try and line it up, that it's straight. I use four pieces of tape, and I try and make my pieces of tape about the same size. So, and that reason I do that is for weight, so that one side's not um, weighted more heavily, and then I just kind of make a cross with it. You may come up with a better way, um, you and your family, to do this, but I just kind of put on a piece of tape at a time, and I try and keep look and see where that line is right there. I'm trying to line it up. So now I'm gonna put a piece of tape directly across from that one. 
and then two more. And again, I'm not, I don't do this, try, don't try and do this perfectly, but uh, as far as length, I don't measure. You can add more tape if you think one side is way heavier than another side. And then sometimes what I also do if I'm using these year after year with kids is I take another piece of tape and just get rid of some of these edges and wrap it around. So again, it's not perfect. And if I feel like it keeps clunking, doesn't work well, then I might say, hey, I think I need to add some more tape over here. But notice it's pretty, pretty straight. It's not leaning, but pretty straight up and down, I think is the biggest issue. And then kind of equally weighted. And Okay, so I am getting some nice curvy lines right here. I got some nice curvy lines. It doesn't seem like it's as weighted as I would like it to be. So I kind of can play with it, push it in, see if I can get it straighter. There we go. And we get some fun lines. And again, the biggest thing is, is the kids have a blast with this watching it. You do want it to run off the page. You don't want that bullseye syndrome where everything is right smack dab in the middle of the page. And if you get that, what you can do is um, take and crop your page when you're done. So if I look, so let's look at some of those really nice lines with loops in them. Some really fun lines. Um, so like taking a look at this page again, I've got like a white space here. You can almost get a white frame. I could take and crop those off with a paper cutter and end up with that project that does go off the page and not have a bull, bullseye syndrome. So